Welcome back to chapter 11. This is our first of four different buoyant force example problems that we're going to see. And one thing I want you to think about as you uh, review them and try them on your own as we go is the similarities between these next four examples, starting with this one. So every single time that we have one of these buoyant force problems, we want to approach it just like we did in chapter four. So chapter four was all about forces, and so the first thing that we do is we draw a picture of the situation. So there is this two kilogram block suspended by a rope in water. We're told that it's water. With our force examples, not only do we want to draw a picture, but we also want to draw the forces. So we're going to draw a free body diagram the forces acting on this thing. So if we think about this, if the water weren't there, there are two forces that we know about from chapter four. We know that gravity acts straight down. So the force of gravity is mass times little g. So that's two times 9.8 in this example, or 19.6 newtons. And we have the rope, which since it's attached to the top of this thing, it's pulling upwards. And so we have the tension. If we reread the problem, we see that that's the thing we're trying to find. That's our unknown here. But then the key new problem that makes this a chapter 11 problem and not just a chapter four problem is that all of this water surrounding this block is pushing up on it. It's pushing on the sides too, but the net effect is that it is pushing up on it because it's a much smaller force at the top. So with this overall net force upwards, we have a name for that. That's the buoyant force, BF for buoyant force. Now, if we submerge this block in water and it's not moving, then what that means is the net forces are equal to zero. Okay, so it's not moving, it's not accelerating. That means that the two arrows that point upward balance out the one arrow that points downwards. To write out those forces, we keep in mind that forces that point in the same direction get the same sign. Forces that point in the opposite direction get the opposite sign. So we have buoyant force plus the force from the rope, tension, minus the force of gravity. And all of that equals zero. We can specify some of these terms. So this is a chapter 11 step. We can specify that the buoyant force is the density of the fluid, the volume of the displaced fluid, which is the same as the volume of the object we've put, it, um, put in the water, times G, the 9.8. Tension is still our unknown. And then we have gravity over here is minus 19.6 equals zero. Okay. So at this point, we want to look at what we've got. We have our regular picture, we have our force diagram, and we have the fact that the forces add up to zero, and we can fill in some information about that. Now I want us to point out a couple of other key uh, things here. The density of the fluid, if it is a fluid like water or air, we have that number and we can look it up. The volume of the object, in a lot of these buoyant force problems, we may be given the mass and have to find the volume, or we may be given the volume and have to find the mass. So the volume of the iron, we need to know to plug back in over there. But the really key thing is that the density of iron is equal to the mass of iron over the volume of iron. That is another kind of new chapter 11 idea for us, that density is mass over volume for a given object. And that's true of fluids and solids. And so the iron block here, it would be the case for that. Okay, to make sure we see this calculation, I'm gonna put it up here at the top. So if you have not yet drawn the force diagram, please make sure you do in your notes. And so we have down here, or we have rather up here now, the density of iron on our slide, but also in our textbook or wherever else we need to look it up. We have 7,860 kilograms per cubic meter. 
the mass of iron in this example is two kilograms, and we need to find the volume, okay? If we multiply both sides by the volume, we have 7860 times V equals two. So we just divide both sides by 7860. And our volume here is gonna be a somewhat small number, but that's okay. So two divided by 7860, we're gonna get 0 0.000254. That's cubic meters. Okay, so now we can plug in these numbers. The density of the fluid, like we said, is the surrounding fluid. That's the water, so we have 1,000. We have the volume we just wrote down, 0 0.000254. And then G is 9.8. Okay, all of that can be calculated, plus tension. And then I'm going to add 19.6 to both sides, just so it's on the other side. So that equals 19.6, all right? So if we look, we now have everything in here except our one unknown. So we can get this, um, this value of that first buoyant force term. We just multiply those three numbers together in our calculators and we get 2.5. So 2.5 plus our tension is equal to 19.6. So if we subtract 2.5 from both sides, our tension in this problem is 17.1 newtons. 17.1 newtons. So the key thing here, and you can always rewind and rewatch this video, is that we started out with a um, picture and a free body diagram that we had to erase. The net forces equal zero. We put in information about the forces. When we got stuck on a couple of things that seemed like unknowns, we reminded ourselves of this um, idea that density is equal to mass over volume so that we could calculate that, plug it in. And then we solve for our remaining requested unknown. So keep those steps in mind, and it might even be worth kind of writing out in words the steps that we took so that you can compare this example to the next few examples that we see. So I will see you in those other videos.